Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are we doing? It's Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. I'm joined today on Porky's Corner by Rico, my friend from London, originally Finland. He uh, started right. Porky's Corner with me three years ago this end of November, isn't it? Probably was, yeah. At that point you knew nothing about technology, you could hardly operate a mobile phone. <laughs> Cheers for that, mate. <laughs> I had a Nokia uh, 702, didn't I? <laughs> exactly. A 3210 playing Snake on the way uh, up to Sheffield. <laughs> How you been on that? <laughs> yeah, I'm all right, mate. Same as everybody else. You Just, wait, you been uh, working in, in London today or are you working from home? No, I, I'm still working from home. I went to the office yesterday, but, you know, there's only 150 people in our office and there was probably 20 people there, but... You see more people around like London Bridge and that area. So people are sort of coming back a bit more, which is nice. It feels more normal, you know? Yeah. Uh, how do you get into uh, London? London Bridge or wherever. I uh, just catch a train, to be honest. But the trains aren't in the morning. There's, you know, that you can have a seat for yourself and, or, you know, the seat next to you is empty. So the trains aren't, it's not very busy at all. Which is strange. Everybody drives, but it's like everybody wants to go. Everybody wants to go for eating out or piss up, but nobody's bothered to go in the office, which is great. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Uh, do you want to ask, ask me some questions, don't you, today, Rico? I'll ask you some questions. Uh, I'm a bit disappointed you didn't say that. It's big porky here. You know, you know. <laughs> oh right, 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 right. Oh, well, you see that enough. Don't we? We're trying to polish it up. We do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm always trying different things, aren't I? Yeah, exactly. Uh, I guess uh, I've put a random mixture of questions for you because I know you've done a lot of videos this week, so I thought I'd ask you some questions. So the first one is, obviously, you haven't been on Twitter for a while because you've been banned or people keep on getting you kicked off. second last year, we were third time on Twitter and obviously the, the, the match room FC... What they do, they keep reporting any, anything I put out, which weren't tweets, they were just videos, weren't they? And I think if you, yeah. if you get so many reports, Twitter take you off anyway, then you have to fight it, don't yeah. you? If you remember yeah. the second time, I, I won, didn't I? I had lawyers on the job, but... Yeah. Uh, can't be doing it, because you, you're, taking, you're taking a big machine on, aren't you, with Matchroom, so... Yeah, so, and you know what, people have nothing better to do. Yeah, yeah, people have nothing better to do with their time. I mean, it's a bit sad, I think. Yeah, but Kevin said to me, look, if, you, if you're if you going to start that, go back and forth with him, it ain't going to work. We, we, you know, we're on board with me. So he said, you're best off leaving. Yeah. So if, whereas I can do the videos and I can just have the last say, can't I? So, yeah, exactly. Why not to interact on the on the YouTube comments? Try I don't, Every now and then I might put agree, but I, I, it's very rare I, I go on there and interact. But, you know, if it's, some people spoil it, don't they? Well, others don't. The majority of them are good people, but... Other than that, yeah, it seems, right. seems like your videos with Terry have become hits, uh, fan favourites, you and Terry. Uh, obviously, we're not everybody's cup of tea, are we? But you're never going to be, are you? Nah, exactly. Paul Frost exactly. said to me, right, years ago, he said, for every 100 haters, you got 100 fat lovers, you're going to get 10 haters. He said, so I don't take it first. Because we had a chat about this years ago uh, before he fought Ward, and we, we, uh, Give me his opinion on it because he was he said if he were to reply to every time somebody had a go at him he'd be, he wouldn't get no done <laughs> yeah and I, as i always say to you ross you know people watch don't they whether they like you or not they're still watching so it doesn't matter it helps your case and i'm going to turn them into lovers anyway so so i've got yeah, but a lot of people the comments are positive as i was saying to you earlier like you look through the comments now and most people are supportive and that's great isn't it well, I've just been uh, sent something today, a spreadsheet thing or whatever it were, and apparently we're, 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 we're going in the right direction with it. Is it analytics or something? So, with some stuff like that. I mean, that. You're, not, you're not yet that technical that you can understand that. <laughs> no, not that. Too. But he, was, he, he, he sent me something and he said, look, this is, where, this is where we were. This is where I wanted you to be, but you've gone by that now. So I said, oh, well, what does that mean? He said, well, you, you're on the right track. So we're... We're getting there, but don't forget, we're only a small channel, aren't we, compared to Biggins? So. Yeah, exactly. And you don't have match rooms back in or... Well, Warren doesn't really have channels, does he? There's no pro-Frank Warren channel, is there? 
No, I think we've got I that guy like De- what's it called? Um, Dev Sani that does his tweeting and tweets as Frank Warren seems to block everyone, but he he's basically a social media guy. But you don't really have a and he does his YouTube stuff, which is pretty poor to be honest. But yeah. To be fair, there's a lot of people who uh, do send comments, and I think they're a bit close at knuckle, but most of them I don't see because they take them off, don't they? Or they I don't like them to block people because I say, well, if you block them, they might not watch, but they block them, so they just don't want me to see or they remove them and that. So it is what it is. Obviously, the tra- I'm, I can turn like that. I, I could take my ball on at any time. If you don't believe me, ask Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> Take my ball at any time. If I don't think that there's something right or something's not being 100%, because I don't need to do this, I can turn my hand to anything. But I like this because I don't feel it's work. It's like a hobby, you know? Yeah. That's- and also, also, it's like, um, it's nice to see positive reactions, isn't it? People engaging, people sharing that clip of you looking, <laughs> doing your missing person reports on Dean White, going on Twitter. Thousands of people looking at it, laughing at it. You know, it's all good I fun, isn't it? I've got nothing against him, but if he's going to come into my world, my boxing little world in my head, and be saying that he's called so-and-so, and he's done this and done that, and if, I think, well, no, that's not true. Or like the thing on the aeroplane, that, that didn't happen. It went like yeah. he told it. But Sky gave him the platform, didn't they? Adam Smith, the spin doctor, and somebody that were there said to me, that didn't happen, and I thought, right... And then somebody said that in his name, and I thought, right, and it kept building up in my head. But I ain't got no against him personally. If he feels he has to do that to get on, but there was a few like that. I've had, to, I don't know. I, I, I am not the, uh, I'm not an angel, as you know. I, we've all got past, haven't we? But I think that if I can make a difference in boxing, like I'd like to think that I've made a difference in the last few weeks since doing a white fight with social media. You know, yeah, had, I think so. I think I've, I've I've not attacked, but I've put people on the spot and set, and put videos out, especially to them with their photograph up on thumbnail, and said what I've said. And from what I've heard, some a couple of people have been in touch with people I know and said, "You know, when you're going to turn it in, Russell?" And I said, "Well, it needs saying, doesn't it?" And it turns out that I were right, one I really of the, the bias. Am I, well, I'm, Johnny I'm, Smith did his apology, didn't he? Johnny Nelson, yeah, but I'm not the oh, only Johnny one. Nelson. I'm not the only one, but there were nobody putting videos out to them because everybody was scared to death to put Macklin on spot, weren't they? Even people at Sky, because yeah. he hadn't come out and apologise, has he? But I'm not. I'm wow, why, why are we all supposed to be frightened of these people? If one, uh, if one has it, the rest have to have it, don't they? You have to be accountable for what they say. I have to be accountable on here. This is why we can't set up all these fake accounts to fire back at people because it were left to me that's what I do but I can't afford to get kicked off here can I because then it, there's two or three that get let down isn't there with what we're doing but yeah exactly exactly and also accountable you know you, you do you do put you know you do ask tough questions and you know the questions you asked Hugh Fury about the shots uh, that he took from Povetkin you know Dean White addressed those in the, in his IFL video with Uma IFL Uma so you know, people are clearly watching and people are clearly hearing this stuff. Or Dean White. Well, what Dean White <laughs> forgot to say is that Alexander Povetkin hit his brother 22 times with left hooks. Now, the 23rd one was totally different to the other 22, how we set it up. Because he was drawing him in, he was setting traps, wasn't he? Dillian thought, oh, it's same as the first one, same as the second one, same as the 20th, same as the 21st, same as the 22nd. But the 23rd were totally different because he went there and then up, didn't he? Now, he never did that before, did he? He tried it once, didn't he, out of the 22? And it didn't yeah. work. We were looking for it all night, wasn't he? So... They, um, yeah, and I, I... As a fan, it always annoys me how things are underplayed. So, if it was Joshua that was losing a fight against Klitschko and then, he, you know, knocks him out or then he's sort of like, what a great punch and, you know... It was all well, and there's always a reason why things are right. But then when something goes wrong, it's a punch from the gods, whether it's Andy Ruiz against AJ or, or Dean White, sorry, Dillian White getting knocked out. There's always, it's like an excuse so that they can make the rematch. Yeah, it's, I uh, can explain it. You know, you know, this rematch, right? You know, when Joshua knocked Vladimir Klitschko out, they said it were. 
amazing and powerful and this and that and he got through choppy waters and all that, <laughs> butter, froggy, durable, all action, compelling, all that. But when the boot was on the other foot, it was a lucky punch. Now, Johnny Nelson, Bellew, all them commentators that were all there on the night, Bean and the rest of them, they all have to be accountable for what they're doing. They're selling, selling something to the public, but they're not telling the truth. Right, they're not telling the truth and they know that and I've put them on the spot now if any of them want to come on here via Zoom they're more than welcome but they want to do it somewhere where they're cosy and they feel safe like IFL they yeah. won't want to do it on here let me tell you because I've got a set of questions here and there'll be questions from Lads on Asylum Andy Patterson all them there'll be Terry Yu Ozzy Smith like Rob Kelly all them boys uh, Steve Wellings, they'll all say, ask them this, ask them this, ask them this, and I'll be ready, right? They know. And I thought when I had them bilbos put up, the one outside Sheffield United ground, one down in here at Rovers Old Ground, I thought that Eddie Earn had said, you know what? We've spent, Porky's spent some money here putting, having billboards up, calling me to go on his channel. I thought, I thought that his ego he would come on channel. I'm not really bothered now. I'm, I'm over it now. But I thought, do you know what? Ego of him, he won't be able to help himself. He might want to ask what yeah. questions I ask. And, he, and he, can't, he is a bit of a fanny merchant. And he might have wriggled out in a few. But I thought his ego, he would have seen the challenge. But he didn't. Um, which I tried. And, and it didn't work out, did it? I did obviously I did a couple of videos in front of the billboards. I thought, he's got to come on here now. But he didn't want to, did he? When I went to Bulgaria, Coogan come over to me and me and Dennis, and we were sat there with Celia, <laughs> that, uh, the lawyer girl, and he said, and Rami, Dennis was mate, and he said, hey, how are we doing? I said, I'm all right. He said, I don't want to get on the wrong side of your pork. So I goes, why is that? Because you might get <laughs> a billboard up with me on. <laughs> I said, yeah, we're a weapon hanging out of your head. But uh, he was actually all right. He's, he's an hard-working lad, Coogan. You, don't get me wrong. He's a company man for them, isn't he? But he's an hard work. Yeah. You know what? All that travelling, traipsing about with your camera, it's hard work, mate. Honestly, it's like, you know, today, I've just got in now, right? My head is banging. It's banging all day because you're on a computer, you're filming, and then you've got to rewatch it. And do you know what? I'm... And I look sometimes. Yeah, I mean, oh, I think you need to give Coogan credit a bit for what he's done, right? But he's done it to it's set up money, right? He's done it the right way. If you want to make money and if you want to kind of entertain, you want to make something that's entertaining for the fans and not factual, I think he's done exactly the right way. But I don't think it can masquerade as something that is an objective Jeremy Paxman type interview with boxers where you're actually asking them tough questions. And the same goes to Trish Dixon, for example. He asks boxers questions. They can tell their stories. That's his way of doing things. He doesn't challenge them on anything, but it doesn't give much back to people that actually want to know stuff. I, I mean, as much as I kind of, some Tris Dixon episodes are a bit like, yeah, but then some of them are quite interested in hearing about boxers' lives, but ultimately they're not challenged. It's an easy platform to go on and give your side of the story and nobody's ever going to push back. And there's so much of that anyways. Like, IFL is exactly the same. Yeah, I mean, I, I've had Dennis on here and I've, over 40, 50 times on the channel. And, uh, there's times where I get more out of him than anybody would because I know him. And I, and I know that Coogan knows Eddie just as well, but he doesn't get, he doesn't push the boundaries. Well, I'll push him with Dennis, right? Even in normal meetings about boxing or who's to go on shows, I will push him. And then, and, and then I'll say, well, why would you do that? You've just contradicted everything you've said. It's, yeah, but we've got to think about that line and it'll be big. You know, like Sonny Edwards, Tommy Frank, that's one fight, for example. Yeah. But yeah, he were willing to throw Sheedy in with Liam. Liam a super middle, Sheedy, really, a light middle. Well, they can meet in middle. Do you know what I mean? And, and I think, well, that, that could have been built up. Two kids from Sheffield. Why did they have to brush that out? I, I, couldn't, I, I didn't get that one, but yeah, Sonny... was an amazing Bobby, fight, though. But yeah, you want to build two flyweights up, two undefeated flyweights. And they're getting, Tommy's 27 now, he's 28 next birthday, so he's not getting any younger, is he? No. Which uh, kids do you think Dennis has that everybody should keep an eye on? 
don't know if I should talk about it. We, uh, wow. we, we are we are at the moment. Places <laughs> 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 where we're not talking. We like this. Remember when I left him in Leeds? <laughs> he rung me up. Yeah, yeah, finally, I went F off. I was doing about one fifty that motorway. I got up wrong motorway. And right, I was like, Get a taxi, Dennis. We didn't speak for four months, and then we we're in Bulgaria, and he, and I felt a jab in my back, and, he, and I turned round, fra- followed with Frank Smith, not you know Frank Smith, my pal from Berry. Yeah, yeah. Dennis were doing his Ron Lyle. I said, "All right, Ron." He went, "Give me a cuddle," and we that was that. <laughs> that night we ended up steaming in his in his hotel suite, and we were all right and that, but we haven't fell out since then to this. J- July 29th, we fill out. So, what's that? Nearly two years, isn't it? Two years, three months, is it? Two mo- 20, 22 months for our last fallout. But we have them all the time, don't we? It'd be all right. It, yeah, you two are like a married couple. <laughs> yeah, you've got to understand, though, boxing is it's a sport where everybody can fall out. You might just, you're not fall out, you just might not want to speak. I'm not, he's not blocked. I'm not blocked. I just don't want to speak to him. I might have a little pop every now and then if I've have a, had a drink. <laughs> I say what I want to say, but you know, if he's having a battle in the street, I'll be first and jump in, won't I? And vice versa, I could go up to his house now and be all right and come away with 20 grand in cash if I wanted to. <laughs> go this, then I could do it 20. But sometimes, you know, boxing egos get in, in middle of the way, don't they? We all have, we all have, we all got, he's got a massive ego, Dennis. I have a little bit, he says it's got out of control. But and there's there's thing there's things that I think should be done differently. I I wanted to make a change when I started with him, and I don't think I have really. I think his stable's worse now than when I started. He might not he might not agree. He might think he's yeah. in a stronger position, but is he? I guess it's partly as well. He can only get fighters from a small area because a lot of these guys are on ticket deals, or you know. They gain versus. No, I don't agree with that, don't you? Ticket deals. Yeah. When a promoter's got TV, I don't want to hear about ticket deals. I don't want to see kids getting paid on a Monday and they've been on ticket deals. You've got, you're a promoter, promote. He don't promote, does he? Does he go on Twitter? No. Michelle does it, doesn't he? He don't put no out. Puts press releases out on Twitter. Does he do interviews? No, because he's spinning that many plates. You can't pin him down. Plus, he's not in country 10 months a year, is he? So yeah. You're, you're, you're pissing in a hurricane, aren't you? You know, you, no, he probably needs. He probably needs like a head of boxing, somebody that's the face of the operation. Well, uh, you're looking at him. But... Yeah. <laughs> that's somebody with board license. Why it's gone downhill? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a, he's a good bloke, Dennis. He's a good bloke, and uh, yeah, I, you know, you know, I always like Dennis, but I don't want to speak to him at the moment. And sometimes when you're in each other's lives every single day and phoning left, right, and centre, and going out. Eat meal and it, drinking it and all that. Sometimes you just need a break. It's just like being in a marriage, isn't it? Or falling out with your brother and sister. But boxing exactly. that to people. And what 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 does bother me about boxing is, I think I can sit, be in a situation when I've heard a conversation and they don't want to speak to so and so, blah de blah, because they've done a really bad thing. And then a year later, they're in bed with that person. I'm not going to say any names, and I'm like, whoa. What's going on here? Yeah. Where well, it is what it is and all that. No, it isn't. Well, I don't want to hear about that. If they've done this bad trick, they're not they're not my pal as well. So and there's too much of that goes on. I think there's a lot of two faced listen, I look at you like this, right? If you did a bad trick to Mark Tibbs, he won't want to be a pal again. If you did a bad yeah. trick to the kid who trains Daniel Debar, he won't want to be a pal again. Peter Fury won't want to be. So and I'm from that mentality. Maybe it's because I'm from a prison background and, and spent a long time in prison and you get a chance to see what loyalty means. Maybe, I don't know. I'm pretty standonish, but I, I can't be doing with anybody backstabbing me. Could you imagine me wanting to go up to Steffi Ball's house and put a show on with him? It ain't going to happen, is it? You know that. No, no, no exactly. So that's how I look at it. So, it's one of those so tell me, how did you actually meet... Um... Mark Tibbs and Jimmy Tibbs. Like, what's the connection? Mark Tibbs and Clinton Woods. No, Mark Tibbs and Jimmy Tibbs. Oh, how did I meet them? Uh, Dennis, Dennis has known Jimmy Tibbs years, only because they're scrap metal men, aren't they? Yeah. 
and I ended up. I went to eat, I went to interview Jimmy, didn't I? Oh yeah, I remember Jimmy in London eighteen months ago. Uh, it was basically through that, and he was taking me for pie and mash. But I, I didn't actually get to meet him. But we've had like the phone contact, and you know, for, for that time. And obviously, I went down to see him, didn't I? Uh, yeah. Ago, and we went out and that. So and I think it's all right. It's all and right. Mark, you get along with Mark. He went to his German Mark always that rings the office. Says, "Porky, why porky?" <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I went out. Sorry, I went out with him. I went out with his dad. For, we we had breakfast, and obviously, I went out with Mark. We had uh, took me to a, a Turkish restaurant, I think, or something like that. Him, Charlie Duffield, is it me, Charlie? Jack. Yeah, yeah. Another another kid. What is it? Is it James? Or is it James? Summit, the kid who said something controversial. Yeah, what's it called? The who got dropped by MTK. I know the one you mean. He's a nice kid, him. Oh, he's a young kid, isn't he? He's a nice kid. Uh, yeah, I mean, well, he got through, thrown it, under the bus, didn't he? So what can he do? I mean, he said the wrong thing, but he got thrown under the bus. Boxers have done a lot worse. <laughs> That's the thing. Yeah, yeah. So they're good people, them, uh, Tibbsers. And respected, aren't they? The, the proper. And I, I yeah. like people like that. And it's not... He's got a bit of pride about him, Mark Tibbs. You know, if something's not right, they don't want to work with you. Like, it's not a money thing. They've got to be right. It's got to be, they've got to be enjoying it and you've got to play the ball, if you know what I mean, play. Because they've seen he's, it. Uh, he's, he's just gone. signed uh, Romeo Romeo, hasn't he? Mark. Mark Tubbs, yeah. To manage him and train I him. think manage and train. I saw him in the gym. Romeo Romeo was at the gym and then I saw the next day. That's the the long air. Yeah, who was signed by Welsh. your mate Spencer Oliver, wasn't he? He managed him first. Remember? Is he Welsh? I'm not sure what he is. Is, it, is he a tra Roman traveller or something like that? Or something, like that. something like that. Something like that, yeah. In fact, there was Frank Warren one at one point. Yeah, he was like 18 and oh, Sorry, he was, he was 18 years old when he was signed by Spence Oliver and he fought a couple of times. Can't remember what happened. Then he was, he's been out of the sport for a while and now he's back with uh, Mark Tubbs. But everybody was like raving on about how he's the next big thing. And he obviously, has he had a defeat? He might have had a defeat quite early in his career, but then he saw nobody's seen him for two years. Oh, he's back, is he then? Yeah, That's with good. Mark Tubbs. That's good. Well, I'm pleased for Mark. Uh, he's building a little stable out there. He might, he might end up with a world champion soon. You never know, do you? I just checked on Boxer. Cause Romeo Romeo, he is 10-0. 10-0, is he? So he had a defeat. Why can we disappeared then? I have no idea. Actually, he fought last four years ago. Then he disappeared. You see, there's a lot of fighters moving about at the moment, but there's no fighting getting done, is there? No. People no. get bored, don't they? They just want to move around. I'm not going to say the names, and I think you know, but, but there's a couple of fighters who've got belts and they're moving about and that, and they're not, but they're not fighting. I, I think they're in limbo. They don't really know where to go. It's like a cry for help, isn't it, with a lot of them? It, it, I think the thing is this, they all think they deserve X amounts of money. So before, let's say before the uh, lockdown, they were, they could have got six grand a fight. Mm. And now they've been offered two or three grand. And they all think, let me wait it out, wait it out. But what's going to happen is a lot of these guys won't fight for a year, 18 months. And there aren't many shows going on either. So small hall promoters aren't putting on shows. So what's going to happen is you're going to end up having a lot of kids who haven't fought for 18 months and then they're going to get lots of upsets because they haven't been active. So I think the whole landscape's going to change. And some of these guys will be doing normal jobs for 18 months, then they'll start training for by, you know, three months out and then they'll be so rusty that they're just going to end up losing. So I think there's going to be a lot of, once the small hall boxing and the lower levels of boxing comes back, there's going to be loads of upsets. Yeah, uh, you might be right there. There's... Uh... There's a rude awakening, isn't there, for a lot of them? Because a lot of them are falling by wayside now, aren't they? And also the weight, right? Because you're not going to keep your weight for nine, ten months, are you? Not like me. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think the only people I can compare things to at the moment are Josh Whale and Dempsey Whale. Dempsey's a lightweight. He's probably one. Yeah. 
one three five. He's probably walking about one four two. So they're fit. Josh is bang on it. He's bang on the weight. Josh, he's just waiting for a date now any day. Uh, so it, they're they're in good shape, but they're dedicated, aren't they? And they've got their own gym. But there's a lot of that. Yeah, they have their own gym and they've got their dad training them. If you have a guy that you're going to have to pay at the end of it and you've been training for 10 months with no income, mm. like you're going to be out of pocket for a while, aren't you? Josh has set up his own business, Squad Box, and he train, he's doing personal training. He's doing, he's doing really well. He's doing really, really well. And uh, I'm, ple- I'm pleased for him. It's really taken off now that he's got his own gym. It's right corner from his dad's. It's uh, Court and Woods or Working Man's Club, I think. And it's, it's Mickey's Athletic. It, they've, they've given him the full club and it's all been done out. And they're in their element there. So I'm, I'm really, really pleased. I've just finished a documentary with Josh. It's just come up now on the screen. And that'll be out tomorrow or Sunday. Because I've got that many videos to put out now. I don't want to overkill it. Are you with me? Because you can put too much effort yeah. in. Can't you? I'm going to tease them a little bit. But, the, but uh, it's all good. I'm into like a good routine as well now. I know where I am with what I'm doing. And we know what we're doing with tech guy behind the scenes because we might have thrown too you can throw too much money at stuff can't you yeah and, and you can think well you're still getting the same views but it looks good and and you know when people are spending that they want to see what they want to know what numbers are doing don't they? it's a numbers game isn't it so, weapon of the week i think weapon of the week's done well and also you don't do that now, Rico. i don't do them now do you mean helmet of the month well helmet of the hel- sorry helmet of the month because international International, yeah, <laughs> but that's but that works quite well. Having all these guys, I like, pop up on the screen like Bean popping up on the screen. Listen, the Bean Father, <laughs> the Runner Bean. I'll get him to knock a uh, a Bean Father thumbnail up for this video, shall I? <laughs> yeah, why not? The bean, uh, the Marlon Brando. <laughs> I enjoyed uh, your chat with Savannah Marshall the other day. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's good. Again, it's the thing that you know her well, so you're comfortable chatting to her, and she's more comfortable chatting to you. So it's not like the usual interview she might do with IFL or others, because it's more like you mates chatting. She's been here. She's 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 a nice lass. Uh, she she's a specimen of a girl to train for a girl to train like she does, and it and punch like she does. She's a specimen. She's a freak of nature. If you've got somebody 12 and a half stone, six foot putting it on you with that low left, trying to draw you in and bang. Oh, she's a freak. But she's, a, she, she's only like that when she gets in gym. Outside, she's very shy and very quiet and unsure. And I don't know. She's just a quiet girl, but I, I've got a lot of time for her. She's... Uh, I think I think she'd have been better off staying up there at the EIS, you know, because they've got a better, they've got a good life up there, you know. Yeah, but I think it it helps her having a manager like Peter Fury because if she had other managers, lots of other these managers in boxing, you know, they'd be just shafting a left, right, and centre. I mean, look at what they're on up there at EIS. Well, when she was there, you're taking on five hundred a week net, uh, Mercedes car from. Attically, if you're not main dealers, mm-hmm. I, I think you get A, B, or C class uh, diesel. You get you get a free diesel, petrol card, free Asda supermarket. I think that's hundred quid a week. All uh, what they call it supplements. You've got all uh, track suits and everything. Free travel, passports paid for. What else do they get now? They get some. Don't think you got any bills as well. And then when you're up there, you've got. Facilities for ice chambers, swimming pools, hot pools, steam pools, steam baths, plunge pools, swimming pools. That's just the, the water-based stuff. Then there's all the equipment in there. You've got. Best- well, I was speaking with somebody that was in Team GB last year and has now left. Um, they turned pro. Uh, I don't think it's all that. From what they were saying, that it's not the nicest of environments. Like. Yes, you have the great facilities, but it's not, yeah. you know, they're all away from their family. They're all training a lot. Also, what I've heard from quite a few people in boxing is 
the way they train them is they spend them. So when you're done with your amateur career, if you have a long one, right, you do two Olympics, you're coming out of BIS with loads of injuries, you're coming out with, you know, loads of back problems. It's not, you know, they're training them to win amateur fights. They're not preparing them for the pro life. So you can also be an amateur for too long and your body can't take the workload that they put on it for more than two Olympic cycles, even if that. Yeah, it's, uh, well, there's been no Olympics, has there, this year for him, has No, it? exactly. It's all pushed back, isn't it? What do you think is going to happen with Fraser Clark, then? Well, I know you said that a lot of promoters are often, but who needs, who needs to sign Fraser Clark at this point? Like, Frank Warren has can't, Joe can't, Joyce. Can't do, not, can't do not with him if you sign him, because of the virus. <laughs> and he's too old. Well, he's 30 next, is he? Or 29? Is he 29 now? Just turned 20. Mm. One at other. He's knocking on a bit in and out, I think he's 29. Yeah, I mean, he's not too old for heavyweight, but he's quite old that you do the path where you take four years to get up to the title shot. You need to move him quite quickly and put a lot of money behind him and get him off the rankings. You'd have to have him in his second fight against Dave Allen, wouldn't you, and throw up roll dice? Some, something like that, yeah. So... Is he better than Dubois? I don't think so. No. He's not experienced enough. Dubois has got more experience on him, he? even though he's younger. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean I'm mean, i a big fan of Dubois. Right? I think he's the real deal when it comes to heavyweight. I do. I think he's really good. I think him and Joe Joyce is a pick and fight, though. Uh, yeah, I think it's closer than you think, but I think Dubois is going to win down the stretch. Mm. You know, let's go through this... Um, there's talks about Eddie Hearn and Frank Warren meeting, which there's been for ages, which I don't believe is going to happen, right? But let's go through the list of the proposed fights. So they've said Charlie or uh, Charlie or Sonny. Uh, I think it's Sonny Edwards versus Kali Afai. Yeah. How do you think that would go? I think Kali Afai beats him. It's too seasoned. Okay. I rate Sonny Edwards. I do rate him. Uh, but I think that uh, Cal Yafai would be too much for him. And how about Nathan Gorman versus Dave Allen? That's the other one proposed. I think that Dave takes loads of punishment for 12 rounds and loses on points. Or 10 rounds, loses on points. Because they sparred, aren't they? I know what sparring went. So. How about Hamza Shiraz versus uh, Cheeseman? I think that Shiraz guy is quite good. I think Cheeseman walks him down. I rate okay. him. I, I think he walks him down. I think he's just... He, he's there to, Cheeseman's an exciting fighter, I think. you know He's like a mini Mickey Ward, isn't he? He's just there to... He is. Him, he? You pay to watch Ted Cheeseman, wouldn't you? And Eggington again, wouldn't you? <laughs> I mean, I'd pay to watch any boxing live, but I, not pay-per-view. But, I'd pay, you know, it's a good fight, isn't it? Yeah. You know. And how about... Archie Sharp versus Zelfa Barrett. Archie Sharp for me. I think Zelfa Barrett's all right. He's got a dig on him, but he's a one-trick pony without that dig, isn't he? That's what I think. He's got his padded record. He's got 16 wins against guy with losing records. Uh, how many wins? 21 is or something like that, is it? 23 or something? I forget now, but 16 of them have had losing records with his beat. So I think his record's padded like Mark Efron's. And... Uh, I think they both got found out in the last fights, although Efren drew and Zelfa won them, but I think they found their level. Yeah. That might uh, sound harsh, but maybe people don't want to say that Zelfa Barrett's found his level because his uncle's who he is. But so how I look at it. Zelfa Barrett were losing that fight, wasn't he? And he pulled it out of bags, didn't he? And he lost to Ronnie Clark, didn't he? So If you're getting beat to Ronnie Clark, you're not going to win a world title, are you? But the yeah. proof will be in the pudding when he fights for a British, won't it? We'll see then. But I wish him all the best. He seems a nice enough kid. I've heard he's an hard trainer. And I hope he does well. But there's going to have to have some massive improvements, aren't he? Maybe he might need a new trainer, but maybe he's managed by him and trained by him, promoted by his uncle, and maybe he might need a change. But who's going to tell him he needs a change? Who's going to yeah. tell Tommy Fury that he might need a change? Because he hasn't looked really that good, has he? But his dad's I mean, what's happened to Tommy Fury? That's the question. Well, his dad's training him now, isn't he? But 
They're Instagram fighters, aren't they now? <laughs> <laughs> what about Chris Jenkins versus Conor Ben? I think Conor Ben walks him down. If it if it's done and it goes to points, it's gonna to have to be he's gonna to have to win eight or nine rounds to win on points against Conor Ben, isn't he? I think I think Conor Ben's a better fighter than people give him credit for, and I think he's improve he's improving constantly. And what damage much, did, sorry, go on. I think there's not much you can do about his surname, but I think he's actually he's a hard grafter and he's improving constantly. I think what damaged him were him getting a number six WBA ranking and he'd not beat anybody in top two hundred, but he got the ranking because didn't he have it written in his contract with some sponsors if he ended up with a top ten ranking? They were going to pay him X amount as long as he were undefeated. So it's easy to manipulate the, the rankings. If you lobby for it, and all the promoter does, he takes them out for dinner and lobbies for the ranking. It's not like you've earned it, is it? Now, if you're going life and death with P&O, then you're getting the WB, WBA number six ranking. You're, at, you're actually ranked higher than Broner, wasn't he? Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> a four-weight a four world champion, and we're talking about a kid here that not won in English. I think if you win the European, you get WBA 5 ranking. <laughs> so that tells you everything. WBA 15 you get, don't you, if you win European? Anyway. I think it might be a 5, but... Is it a 5 with WBA, is it? Yeah, exactly. So, oh, you could, so you could basically not be at English level and you could still be next to somebody well, that's a European champion. You top 15 with IBF with Commonwealth if you win Commonwealth. If you lobby, Dennis lobbied for Cameron, didn't he? He ended up with Liam Cameron and IBF 12. How far do you think Liam could have gone if, uh, Liam you know? Cameron, uh, I think he could have, with right setting in Sheffield, right crowd behind him, certain people judging, or I don't know, I think he could have won a European title, Liam. I don't think he could have beat Golovkin. I think we all know that, or Canelo. No. I think he could have, could have challenged and maybe got in his position for an eliminator or something. So he... He's got to regret all that now, hasn't he? Yeah. What What would you? Um, how would you rank him against someone like Matthew Macklin? What are the peaks? Yeah. I think Macklin would have probably beat Liam. I think he'd have beat him in a good fight, though. But I think he'd have beat Liam. Yeah, I think he'd have beat. Let him. Let's continue Matthew. this list of uh, matchroom versus Queensbury. So you've got Liam Williams against. Andrade. Liam Williams ices him. He ices everybody now, doesn't he? He's a superhero now as we're dominant. <laughs> That's it. We'll not, That's no, we'll not go too close to knuckle on this one because I'll get I'll be getting threatening phone calls again. <laughs> knock on the door. Don't ring me, knock on the door. <laughs> what about jo Joyce against Chisora? Joyce. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. He's tailor made for Joyce, and that's why they didn't want to go near him in it. He comes yeah. forward with that poor man's Joe Fraser, doesn't he? Joyce. Yeah, oh, 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 oh. yeah Joyce. Too big, too strong, too, too long arms. Now the hardest fight Yard against Boazzi. Ooh, I'm a big Anthony Yard fan, but I'm a big Boazzi fan. Boazzi is more of a connoisseur, isn't he? He is. I think Boazzi, on the night, if he wanted to, could. Turn yard on his head, but if he gets caught, he's gonna go, isn't he? So I think that's a pick and fight. Is it a pay per view fight? Yes, it is because I want to see it because I'm hardcore. But I've screamed about certain fights in the past being pay per view and they shouldn't be. But looking at what they've achieved, it shouldn't be pay per view, should it? But no, because of the current climate, if they're going to give us white against 41 year old Povetkin. And it's not even for a European. Anthony Yard against Boazzi, that's got to be pay per view as well, hasn't it? Got to be yeah, I mean, you can look at pay per view in a number of ways. The way you just look there now is that the standard's so low that anything above that standard becomes pay per view. So that's like a promoter's dream, isn't it? Because yeah. the standard's been lowered. But the ultimate test on a pay per view is is there demand for that fight? And I think there is demand for that fight, whereas there was never any demand for White against Provetkin 1. Nobody was asking for that fight to be made, but a lot of people are asking for Yard against Boatsy to be made. I think it's a it's a pay per view fight as long as the undercard is strong. Yeah. Like you need competitive undercard fights on that because otherwise, that's the main event shouldn't really be a pay per view because that's similar level to Chris Eubank 
Junior against Billy Joe Saunders won or Tyson Fury against Chisora won. It's a, it's on that same level. Yeah. 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 How about Dubois against White? Dubois. Dubois steamrolls him. He, you know what, right? I'm not, I'm not just saying this because I'm a big fan of Mark Tibbs and I, and I like people to stay loyal, but this is how I look at it. If nothing's broke, why why fall out? It's like with Tyson and Peter Fury, twenty five and zero. What? How I, I can you? I hope you not. How can we not working together? Mark Tibbs and Dillian eleven and zero. The heavy lifting's been done. You should pick off the fruits then. But I think that the bar is too big for him and too well schooled. I think Dillian White's very rough right edges. He's got through a lot of fights on heart. For example, life and death. We Chisora twice. Do we agree? Yes. Life and death with Rivers. Life and death with Parker. Do we agree? I mean, that Parker fight, if he would have went for another round... You're done. Done. Right, so we've got <laughs> four life and deaths. Whack with that life and death. I think it was. I wouldn't say life and death, but he had his struggles in that fight. It should, and it shouldn't be a fight they struggling with. Did he go to points with Elenius? I think he did, didn't he? He did. Malcolm Tanny knocked him out, but he, 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 he were no anyway. He, he were useless anyway. He cut him down like cheese, but he should have done. But these were all men. Malcolm Tan were 39, wasn't he? Povetkin were 41. Who else were there? Lucas Brown were 40. He knocked him out, but he were 20 stone. But he, he cut him down like cheese. He did what he had to do. There's another And Brown one. got um, the whack sparring. Whack. Yeah, what whack 40 as well. Yes. So what is this, the 40 club? Now he's got Povetkin again. What's this? His fifth 40, 40 odd year old. What is Dillian White doing fighting old men? Who oh, after him, Ortiz? He won't go near him though, will he? Nobody wants to go near Ortiz. Why are we putting up with this pay per view? I'm off on one now. Can you see? <laughs> why, why are we putting up with these 40 odd year old men and Dylan White? What, what, why are we having to put up with this? And why has Dylan White got a rematch straight away, but they couldn't do a rematch with Harper and Jonas? They couldn't get that rematch. And well, I know now I found out today that Steffi Bull didn't want it. So they're going in a different direction. So No, oh, Steffi didn't want that fight. No, they don't. Is that want a little it. exclusive? That's an exclusive, yeah. I was found out today. So Well, I can see where he's coming from because she got leaked, so they won't want to put her in there again because she's never been hit before. She, did you see her after the fight? Oh, I got hit. Well, you, it's like going in the shower, isn't it? You're gonna get wet, aren't you? If you're gonna, mm -hmm. you're gonna get hit. But she'd been Look, they've made a living out of Terry Harper, aren't they? They've done well. He's done very well, Steffi. He's, you have to tip your hat to him. But they've developed a style for her where she stays out of range. She's very fit as regards fitness. And she, she, she's got a style where they can get money and they created a bit of a story. I don't believe a word of it because I know what's gone on. But they've created this story and they've let Adam Smith put her on internet and they on sky and admit that she's a lesbian and just said she worked in a chippy and all that so they've created a bit of a story for her develops a style which is all good in it but the first time she fights anybody she's getting knocked about by a 36 year old isn't she so they're going to stay away from anybody like that now aren't they because they want to keep her earning because the secret of the game is spondool isn't it well it's exactly it's so make the most money with least risk what? At the game. Make the most money with the least risk. Yeah. Yeah, and I can see where she's coming from, but she seems a nice lass. But what put me off? Well, when he come out in that interview and went, well, everybody knows I've been doing Teddy's Twitter for three year. So, well, I were on Twitter three years ago and I used to see all them tweets. So, and he were tweeting back and forth. So what does he do in his house at night, Steffi Bull? Does he say, I oh, know, I'll put a tweet out on Terry's account and then I'll reply to it. But he's talking to himself, though, isn't he, doing that? He is. He I is. can't take anybody. So I don't want anybody around me like that. People start <laughs> acting like that around me. I'm not bothered. Because <laughs> if, if we tell a lie to me, if you, anything else you say after that, it's no good, is it? Because you've lied. Yep. Now, and I said that to all people around me. If you lie to me, Oh, else you say, it ain't any good. So, and there's a few people now, and they're like, yeah, but, but I'm like, no, no, you said it. 
and that's how you've got to be. But he's done well. He's managed to manipulate everybody, hasn't he? And get her into position and all this intense beef, fake beef, Terry Harper, Bell to Terry, Terry Harper ticket seller and all that. It's all lies. All lies, mate. It's a lot of this ticket seller stuff is mutts because only the motors really know. You give Everybody's a big ticket, ticket seller. You give Everybody's a big ticket seller, aren't they? Everybody's meant to be this big ticket seller. Right, they tell you, don't they? They say, you're going to get X amount, but you've got to do tickets. So they give you the tickets. That's your purse. What you do then to get in with certain promoters, you just say, I've done all them tickets, right? So they don't have to pay you any money. So then they go on their social media and say, she's this great ticket seller. But down here at Dern Valley when she fought, they didn't do any tickets. They didn't do any. And it only holds a couple, three or four hundred down, and they weren't doing any. So you don't go from that to selling thousands, do you? But my children are not bothered because they know you're lying anyway. They don't have to gear note. They're happy with that. But they've done well for they've done well for the last. But don't tell me that you're doing this and doing that when you're lying. I can't I don't take people serious like that. I won't be lied to. Not in boxing. I lied enough in other things. I, I, there were people lying enough in other things that I used to get involved in before I got involved with this. So I ain't come from that to this to still be knocking around with the same arseholes. So now I won't put up with any of that. So that's how I am. Uh, on it, most honest game I've ever done, scrap metal. You're brilliant. <laughs> People used to, used to sh- stand on and that. That's a good game to be in, but I got shut down. <laughs> I got shut down, then I might waste carrier people, but that's a good industry. If I'd have known, if I, if I'd have known them where I know now, I'd have been all right, I'd have gone and got a license. <laughs> <laughs> but boxing, I, think, I don't think it's any different to being a criminal. I think, in fact, there's more honour amongst thieves than there is in boxing, mate. Because boxing people, they come with a smile, don't they? Hey, exactly. Us. And then next minute you drive off in your car and they go, you stick knife in, don't they? So, but I won't put with that. But I do enjoy what I'm doing at the moment. And I'm really happy. I'm in a good place. It's, I'm enjoying it. I'm just happy. But boxing's a leaky ship as well, isn't it? Because the same people that might slag you off are the same people who are going to call you and say, this guy complained about your videos. So I'm not bothered. If people want to pull me up on what I say in my videos, pull me. I, I'm accountable for my actions. If you've got a problem, ring me. Get me on blower. Get me number of anybody. Ring me if you've said, said something and we'll have a conversation. So far, there's only been two people that have pulled me. And they didn't throw a punch. So <laughs> there you go. Um, uh, do, you still, uh, do you still follow on Twitter? All, not on Twitter, but on YouTube. Do you still watch stuff like Ultratech Raw and yeah. all these other guys? I watch Ultra Tech, yeah. I email him. I like him. He's all right. The other kid is at UCTV. I like him as well. They're pretty out there, aren't they? But I like him. I don't agree with him hiding behind... And I'm not saying hiding behind the camera, but I don't agree with him behind the camera, but I can understand why. But and I do know somebody that knows Ultra, so he's all right. But I've never met Ultra Tech, but I like what he stands for. And I like people that are brave, do you know what I mean? Who are willing to say it as they see it. Do you know? Because there's too many people fraudulently carrying off in this game, isn't there? we know who they are. There's too many people slinking about in boxing. They haven't even got board licenses, but they're these manager advisors. What's all that about? Go get a manager's license and do a job right. I, I have a problem. Yeah, well, I have a problem. Well, you couldn't get yours, did he? The board just didn't want you. <laughs> well, it didn't help that Chief of Police, Les Potts from Sheffield, were on board. When I walked in, I thought, Look who it is. And he had my file there with a picture of me when I used to have flat top. <laughs> and he said, have you been in tour before? And I went, well, not for work, not worth bragging about. And he just pulled it out. And I thought, oh, here we go. <laughs> it wasn't the more on front page on one of them. But he was oh, the- after, but it is what it is. Isn't it? If, if Dennis had gone on it with me, I'd have been all right. But I wanted to do it on my own, didn't I? I'd do it my own, do my own way, get it. I didn't want to bother him with it. And, but it, look, after, once I left that meeting then, it was game on with between me and board, mate. Game on. So, so I won't be messed about like that. Not when I know there's people that have done more serious things than I've ever done and they've got board licences. So why well, can it can work for them but not me? Exactly, exactly. I mean, it's where your face fits. Yeah, well, look at Dex Spellman. 45 day ban he got stopped in it Dylan White got iced he got a 28 day ban 
why why is that if they wanted to get Dillian back in camp quicker uh, there's no consistency with Ward is there all it is is a load of fat old 70 year old men it's the same men that were doing it when I was a teenager and they've been milking the system every weekend flying round world traveling round England hotel five star salmon and eggs do you know what I mean sea bass and mashed tatey double whiskey, Moet champagne, bottles of wine for the wives, two and three of them at once. I've seen it all, mate. And there's been too much of that going on, too much free gratis, and I'm going to fucking stop the lot if I can. I want it to be a new... I want there to be a new governing body. So if there's anybody out there watching this and you've got a few quid, let's get some started up and then you can be in charge of boxing because it needs sorting out. If they can sort cricket out like they did in the 60s, and football, like they did in the early 90s, they can sort boxing out once and for all, can't they? So what's the oh, idea? Of the you... snooker, didn't they? Barry Earn got rid of all that lot, didn't he? World Professional Snooker and Billiards Association, Rex Williams and all them old fuddy duddies. They got rid of them lot, didn't they? They got rid of all that Lord shower, didn't they, at Lord's that were running cricket for years. So why can't they, why can't they do it with, with boxing? Why can't they tidy it up so that fighters have got pensions? So that... When a fighter can't fight, he can, he can get he can get a wage every week. You know, when they're banned for six weeks, you know, like journeyman, if they get knocked out, yeah. they're not allowed to fight for six weeks, are they? Or four weeks, whatever. Why can't they do all that? Why can't there be something there? I mean, what 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 are these people doing? Teching and teching and teching all the time. Is that what we're going to put up with? And nobody wants to come out and have a go at these people, do they? Because they've all got board licenses. I understand. Look. I had a go at somebody in a video. I didn't mention his name, but I had a go at people in general. It's all right getting me to fire the bullets, but it's about time that some of these went on the social media accounts and said, look, we're not happy with bored. A few years ago, they weren't happy. They went to Luxembourg, didn't they, Frank Warren? But they yeah. soon come back, though, didn't they? They soon came back because the board, oh, come back, come back, we'll repair the damage. They should have, put them, they should have sent the board to Coventry for 12 months stop the tap. You know when I get banned from pubs around here? They stop me tap. Russell, yeah. can't come in here for a year. Why not? Because we can't have you doing what you're doing. So I say, well, fair enough. They stop your tap and that's how you do it. But I know when I go in there again, I can't take piss, camps in toilets all night. Not that I do that anymore now. But I know that I can't go in there and take piss because they're, they're going to not have it. You know what I mean? I'm going in there for a piss. I've got something on my shoulder. We're just checking what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. Where I'm coming from, so they stop your tap now. Frank Warren, Eddie Earn, Dennis, and all that they should have stopped the board's tap when Frank went to Luxembourg and all gone and worked with Luxembourg and said, Listen, there ain't only you that can govern the sport, we can go elsewhere because we're in EU, aren't we? Well, we were, weren't we? Yeah, they've let them do it for years. You know, do you know that board? Let me tell you, do you know it was set up years and years and years ago. Right, it, they weren't voted on or anything like that, it was just somebody that set it up. And it's just carried on. It's like a fraudulent company, the Boxing Board of Control. It's like people that are leeching on people's bloods. That's all they do. They leech, all of them. They know who they are. When they see me, you know what happens at shows because you've been there, haven't you? Mm -hmm. I go, don't you come in my company? You, oh, me, yeah, you know you. And they do one, don't they? They do one. And mm -hmm. you know why, don't you? Because I tell them what they are. Well, that's what they are, the leeches. The worst than any of these leeches that leech off fighters, because they're leeching off everybody. Leeches, I have a problem with. Prostitutes, mate. Prostitutes. And, and they don't govern. That's the problem. They don't govern this. You're right, mate. But nobody can dare say anything because they don't want the board license to cough them. They don't want. And this is why you've got people now in boxing and they don't have a board license, but the board don't say out to them because they don't want to upset certain people that they're working with. Now, if you do it for one, you've got to do it for other. Right? That's my opinion. If you say you can't have a license, Russell, you can't have a license. You've got a Section 18 on a policeman on your record from being 23-year-old. That'll follow me around for life, right? But there's other people that have got Section 18s. Maybe not on a copper, but they've still got Section 18s on their record. John Fury's got one on his record. He's got a board license. Hasn't he? Yeah. Richard Towers has got a board license, but mine were a copper, wasn't it? So it's a bit yeah. different when you're going for an interview with a copper. So fuck them all anyway. Fuck them all. It, need, it needs busting up from top to bottom, and it needs 
somebody to set up a governing body, like a world boxing governing body or something. Somebody sent me something over there on WhatsApp, a screenshot. He needs something like that so it can all be started again fresh. They want rid of all them 70-year-olds. Yeah, you, Robert Smith, who's watching, and all the rest of your shower, Charlie Giles, the lot and you. They want <coughs> taking off at the neck and gone. They're all 70-odd, they're all old men, and they've all been having the noses in the trough. They're like pigs with truffles, and they've got a go, mate. They're like a committee in a working men's club. You know, they've been there years, and then yeah. when the son gets to 25-year-old, he's walking around with good old cream hair and 20 Benson in top pocket in, in, in his Fred Perry T-shirt and white socks, black shoes, black sh trousers, two foot to short. It's the same old people, and it's like hand me down job, isn't it? Well, it's been going on for too long at that border control. They all know about it, all trainers, managers, promoters. Well, there's, there's, nobody's doing anything about it, is it? Yeah, I've been outspoken about it. I don't like that. I don't like ticket deals for starters. I don't like that. And they, ticket deals are illegal. You know that, don't you? Yeah, they are. And they know it. Well, everybody does them. them. Everyone why does them. They, why don't they get at it? At all these promoters with ticket deals. And, so they, your job's to promote. There shouldn't be ticket deals for these fighters. There shouldn't, it shouldn't be. It's, it's wrong. Do you think it should be a similar system to the US where you have different state commissions, which are like the board, and then yeah. you shop around? Yeah, count, you know, different counties. Yeah, so you, if you go to a different county, and if you have a fight in this county, these are the rules you need to apply by. What they've got up here, they've got an area council, area councils and this and that, and it's the same old people. And it, For example, for example, and I'll dig him out while I'm here because I'm not really bothered because he knows I'm not into all this drug game cheating. Dominic Ingalls had three fighters fail three dope tests, hasn't he? Yeah? Yeah. His family are on board, aren't they, for area council up here? So he's, he's not going to get into trouble, is he? What's going to happen? No, what's going to happen, is it? What if Dominic has another fighter fail? That'll be four, won't it? That we know of. Yeah. What about them that we don't know of? He's not exactly a walking advertisement for anti-steroids, is he? <laughs> no, but what if he has another one of four? Let's say Nothing's four. gonna happen. Nothing's gonna happen. No, but all these fighters they go there and all the, they all turn into supermen, don't they? Right. Mm -hmm. So what happens if he has a fourth dope test failure? Nothing will happen, will it? What nope. if he has a fifth? There'll be a bit of screaming on social media. I mean Lawrence Coley had a go at him, didn't he? Fair enough. And a few of us, but no it'll happen. But does any win does anybody from that gym that beats anybody from now on, does that win count? Do, or has that win got an asterisk next to it? Probably does. Probably does, to be honest. Uh, especially if there's a quick improvement. But I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say Dominic Ingle is alone or his fighters are alone. It's just whether your fighters get caught. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. But the whole, I mean, how can he take any of this doping stuff seriously when we're still looking for Dillian White's uh, B sample? B sample, yeah, exactly. I mean, they haven't come out and reported on that yet, have they? But everybody's happy to trot around uh, Liam Cameron's example, how the board went oh, properly yeah. like hard on something. But then when it's a matchroom fighter, you know, there's not even a due process. You just sweep it on the gar gar uh, carpet and then. Eddie Hearn says it's been dealt, but we can't talk about it for legal reasons. Of course he can talk about it. It's just bullshit, but nobody's pulling him up on it. I mean, nobody's even asking Dillian White at the press conference about what happened with the B sample. No single journalist dares to ask that question. Yeah, I see where you're coming from, mate. Tell me another sport. Let's talk about football as an example. Yeah. If a Premier League player fails a dope test and he's spattered around all the papers... Then he doesn't play for a few games, and then he's suddenly playing. And in the press conference Rocky, before the game, yeah, go on. Go on, or after the game, nobody is asking the manager why is this guy still in the lineup? What happened with the sample? In boxing, it's the equivalent. The guy is playing the game, or he's still boxing, but nobody's even asking the question. It's sort of nobody's even dares to ask the question because they it's ridiculous. Mm. Yeah, it is. it's disappointing, isn't it, really? It's disappointing. But like I've just said there, Dominic's had three failures that we know of that he's trained. So if he has a fourth, right, is he going to hand his licence in? No. 
you're not going to do that, are they? They're just going to ride it and be smirky about it. But he knows if he bumps into me, he'll, he'll, he might say, oh, I didn't like what you did on your video. I'll say, well, you've got fighters failing dope tests. I say, if you fail a fourth, are you going to run on your license? And he might give me some smarmy comment, but I'll just stand there and tell him what I think. I don't like all like that. I have to have closure in my head then. So, Dominic, when I see you, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> but you know what happened to Panama what's Lewis. He what's he going to do with him? He's got the art of a breadcrumb. He's got the fucking art of a breadcrumb. What's he going to do with him? What's he going to do with him to me? Him? What's he going to do? Arm wrestle me to death. He's got the art <laughs> of a breadcrumb. He can't rumble with me, him. Jesus Christ, man. But what do you think? But you know, like Panama Lewis in the US, right? The guy that put the... Um, whose hand wraps did he load? That oh, trainer. It's got a life ban. Exactly. Life ban. Right? You do something illegal, you get a life ban. Life ban. But yeah, you got freed. Well, what about Tony Bellew? He wanted all these drug cheats shot and stoned to death in a village and stop people. <laughs> He wanted them hung off back at lobbies like they do in, in Afghanistan with heroin pushers or something. And then we've got Dominic Ingall. And, and, well, what's he got to say about that? He hasn't said no. not said a word. Or Daly and White. The only thing he'll say is he's a good guy. He wouldn't definitely take drugs. It's like, well, how do you know that? I think, I think Bellew did have a pop at Dominic. But look, how many people get caught for drugs in boxing and they go, yeah, I'm guilty? They all deny it. They all, oh, nasal spray or this and that, fart spray or some links deodorant spray, whatever. Do you know what I mean? Like, like, fucking raw beef or some or fucking wild boar or something. Look, there's always a story or an answer, isn't there? There's only that girl that's come out and admitted it, isn't it? The, uh, yeah, what's it called? Mia St. John? Mia St. John. She's come out and went, look, I've been cheating for four years, didn't she? Right. But then everybody attacks her, right? Everybody says this is disgraceful. She should be, you know, she should be publicly executed. She's a disgrace to boxing. Yeah. She's doing exactly what others are doing. And she also said others are doing as well. But yeah. nobody wants to hear that. No, no, they didn't know. So I think that it needs looking at. It's all fundamentally wrong. But it's boxing, isn't it? But we keep saying, don't we? Well, it's boxing, isn't it? It's boxing. But we shouldn't, we shouldn't be able to keep Say saying that, should we? We shouldn't. It shouldn't be right. No, I, I think fans need to demand a higher standard because otherwise, nothing ever improves oh, if we don't demand. They've got to boycott the pay per views. They've got to, you know, the video that's gone out today, and I said, look, here's the email. It's no good telling me, and that goes for people in the industry. They can't keep putting me on the spot. I was warned about this by Dennis two years or two, three years ago. He says, look. You're going to be, people are going to be wanting you to fire bullets for them. And I went, no, well, I'll just say no then. He said, well, you've got, to, you've got to make your own choices. And it's just, and it just keeps coming and coming because they don't want to say it themselves. So the email's out there. If you're unhappy, just email Sky and they'll, they, it'll come from the top. Sky are at the top. They're the ones that pay the money. So if Sky it comes from the top, it does, then goes down to Mr. Bean. And then it'll go to Eddie Earn. In other words, Eddie, you've got to start making these fights. Then it might start at BT Sport, to, to, to their head Chavy, to Frank Warren, to the rest of them. And then it'll go down, it'll filter down to judges and fighters. They've all got to get the shit together to drug testing. For example, why is it whenever we have a bad scoreline, <clears throat> somebody, somebody two rounds out as a judge, well, it's only two rounds, yeah, but it's a 10 round fight and it's two rounds out. The other way, that's four rounds. How can you have four rounds wrong in a 10-round fight if there's somebody been dropped in one at round? There's too much... That's 40%. We are, we're giving them a pass. We're giving people passes all the time. <coughs> Ian, 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 Ian John Lewis, the mm -hmm. guy is Jonah. The guy, he's the Frank Spencer of boxing, mate. He's had that many... <laughs> passes. And he knows how it works because he were a boxer himself. He knows how to play the game. These people... I've had the noses in the trough too long. We need new referees. There's too many referees, too familiar with too many promoters. All the lot wants to go. It's all a rotten cesspit. The lot needs shaking up. It wants shaking up from top to bottom. But there's too many people eating off it, so they're going to keep going on. But they're ruining lives and they're upsetting me. Give me an ulcer. <laughs> Give me your belly, you. Giving me a bell, your bell, you gives me an ulcer every single day. But I've only got to hear his creepy little voice, and it sends me mad. People, 
<laughs> sends me mad, mate. But uh... do you think? Um, so do you think they need to? If they were to get rid of all of them, do you think there would be enough people that would want to get involved? Yeah, you know what? If somebody came in and said, "Right, you lot are gone. The board are gone." But to get rid of board, you're going to have people like Frank Warren they're going to, and Eddie Earn. They want to keep the board there, don't they? Because if the board were no mm -hmm. good, they'd want they'd be working the other boards, wouldn't they? Or they'd have set their own up because they've got them where they want them, aren't they? Yeah. If them, but if that board were were giving them an hard time all the time, do you think they'd put up with that? In times when Frank didn't like it, he went and worked with Luxembourg, didn't he? But they'd go elsewhere, wouldn't they? So what they you need like, is you they, need to these jobs need to become professional. So you need to have like two or four year tenures, and you need to be and that what they do in football and other sports is you actually apply to become so it's like a job interview. So you do a proper job interview. So you don't even have to have a boxing background. You have to you might come from accounting or whatever you do, or you might come from another sport, you might come from Sports England, you might come from rugby. What you need to do is you need to apply for this position. It's a four-year position. And then based on how well you do, you need to reapply for the position. And then there needs to be an independent person, like a headhunter, that appoints these people to the jobs based on how good they are in the interviews and how well they do in all sorts of presentations and other stuff. And what you need is you need more people from outside of boxing coming into boxing and scrutinizing it. So you don't need people from boxing doing this stuff. Because it's no different to any other sports, is it? We don't mean you're, you're governing, aren't you? So you're governing a sport, and governing a sport includes health and safety. It includes financial. It includes contracts. It includes you know managing the managers and managing the promoters, and you know that all sorts of things. So you don't really need to be in boxing to be a board member or to sit on a boxing board. You just need somebody that's able to govern. What other sport would you get where the number one and number two heavyweight, number one and number two in the world, say, for instance, Borg and McEnroe back in the day? Yeah. What if you had them at Wimbledon and they said, you know what, we're not going to play in final? Because that's what we've got with Tyson Fury and Joshua. Well, you have, I mean, we've got two different things. You're talking about the sanctioning bodies, which is a whole other matter. But the board level, which governs the sport in the UK, that's the big issue, isn't it? Or that's the issue that we can fix in the UK. Sanctioning bodies is a whole nother question. Because you and I could set up a balance and we could have that sanction, you know, we could have that start and sanction entirely. So whether people fight for it or don't fight for it, it's up for them. But actually, what you really want is to focus on the grassroots levels because what happens is when a 10 and 0 guy, let's say Tommy Frank, for instance, gets shafted, on a Frank Warren or Eddie Hearn card, that's got a massive impact in his lifetime earnings in boxing. He loses a fight when he's, you know, early on in his career, when he's 8 0 and he loses a fight. That's got a big impact on where you're going to go in the sport, isn't it? Of course it has, yeah. But what we need to do, we need to take a leaf out of UFC's book. For example, I, I did have a little think about this last night and I jotted a few things down. So I'll let you into a little secret. Right? <laughs> I think that UFC is a good model because even if they get beat a couple of times out of the first 10 fights, it doesn't matter, does it? Because they just go again, don't they? It, Dana White brings them back, doesn't it? But in boxing, you cast aside if you get a loss. So, nobody, so the managers, they don't want to let them fight anybody, do they, in the first 10 fights? Even an Olympian, you know, like Boatsy, he's not really fought anybody in his first 12, has he really? Yeah. And his 13th fight is a shocking opponent. His 13th shot a shocker as well, yeah. So what, what is he doing, really? He, he's learning his craft, isn't he? But he's, yeah, but he's been an Olympian. Well, Andre Ward, after 10 fights, could have won Super 6, he reckons. So Joshua reckons he could have won a world title after the 10th fight. He reckons he could have beat Charlie Martin on his debut. So they're Olympians, possibly. aren't they? Yeah, possibly. So... Why do these Olympians have to pad the records up? It's becoming boring. It's the same. Well, look, they're saying they're putting great shows on, but when you look on the bookies' odds, they're not. You know when you've got a pay-per-view yeah. fight on, right, and you've got 
shocking odds for a, one opponent is like X amount against to win. How's that a pay-per-view? It's not and shouldn't be. Um, but I think the UFC model, it works in a sense that PBC tried that to an extent, didn't they? They wanted to have their own and the PBC focused on a few weight classes like the Walter weights, um, junior middle weights and a few others and they have enough fighters that they can just fight amongst themselves. Um, but the issue really becomes the fact that boxing has a heritage of having these belts, like the WBC belt, which is the most prestigious belt. So sponsors, uh, broadcasters, they want to see the fighters fighting for the WBC belt. So it might work at a small hall level where you say, Dennis has 200 fighters and they only fight against each other and they never even want to get to the British level because they're just ignoring the board. They never want to get to, maybe they'll fight once they get to a certain level, maybe they'll go and fight in world, you know, for world titles. But it works in, at that level. At the level above, it's a bit harder because unless all the promoters come together and say, you know what, forget about the governing, you know, the sanctioning bodies. We're just going to fight our guys against each other. We don't care about the rankings. We don't care if our fighters get struck. That's what makes it quite hard. Yeah, 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 you're right, Rico. You're very right, yeah. But it's, it's, it remains to be seen what's going to happen, but I just think that big changes are needed. And I want to start talking positive about it, but there's that much that you see behind the scenes and it's that disorganised. It's like, I think it's designed to, it's a flawed design, isn't it? It's flawed, isn't it? There's that many... Yeah things where you can penetrate it and manipulate it. It's designed to be manipulated in it by certain people. And, and but it, as, so, it, as somebody said, why would you vote for something that's going to lose your job? That your job, a lot of jobs and a lot of these people's lives depend on the chaos and the favoritism and the bad organization. So they aren't going to want to change it. So the only way it's going to change is that fans force the change or actually TV networks. That's more powerful. TV net. This is why. This is why I've gone after Sky today, because they're the top dog. And if people don't pay buy these pay per views, boxing will sort it. So that it's the only way. It's no good me pulling people at shows and saying, "Here you, you know you, you've had your nose in snout years." And oh, Porky, don't start. So no, no, no. It's got to be said. No, don't leave it. Leave it. You, you, you're going to cause problems for Dennis. I listen. Fuck Dennis. I'm not talking to Dennis. I'm talking to this cunt here, front board. Who's that? And they'll walk off then. Because when they know when they see me, they do a, they, they do one when they see me, that board, it shows. They, they do one because they know I'm going to put it on them every time. It's like I put it on Charlie Giles over summer. I'm not going to say which fight it was. They were putting a belt on a fighter. They were putting a belt around, a, well, I'll say it. Charlie Giles were putting a belt around Mikel Kessler's waist, right, when he fought Froch in Denmark. He was putting a fucking belt around his waist before, before it was even fucking announced. Do you know what I mean? How can that be right? He's not supposed to know. No. You know what I mean, it's the other guy that's reading it out, isn't it? The MC. Giles, Giles shouldn't be knowing. Do you know what I mean? It's fucking wrong, mate. It's wrong. So. Do you it, think transparent scoring would help? What, what, no, we know no, what. No, no, because you'd get fighters coasting, wouldn't you, if there were seven rounds up? Yeah. But then the other guy won a knockout, so I don't know, it works both ways. But no, I want to keep it like that. But I want people who fuck up on scoring, I want them to be sin-binned, banned for so many months. If a referee like Ian St. John stops a fight with Enzo Macronelli and another guy and, and then says after he got it wrong, I want him fucking off. He should be gone. Incompetent. He's either on take or incompetent. If he, Either way, if he will put in an extension on my house, and my, one of my kids fell, come to, was seeing me and he fell through it. I said, what the fuck have you done with me floor, you? You're fucking useless, get gone. You won't have him back to do an extension on your house, would you? So why should he be allowed to be a shit referee or a shit judge? He won't fucking off. Listen, you know, if you're treading dog shit, Rico, what do you do? You get rid of it, don't you, because it leaves stains. So Ian John Lewis is dog shit, mate, as a referee and a judge. So fuck off. Consider what you've had severance pay. Take the train, mate. Get out of Dodge. With these biased, the... biased commentators. Dave Allen said something today, right? He said that Adam Smith has got a conflict of interest with being 
uh, Sky and in Matchroom's pocket because they've got a Matchroom have got an exclusive with Sky, haven't they? So how can yeah. Adam Smith be a fucking commentator on fight and be fair? And Dave Allen's got a point, and do you know Dave Allen? I gave him some stick for not being dedicated. You know what? I tip me out to you, David, for saying that. Do you know why? Because he'll be punished now for that, David, behind the scenes. He will be punished. Yeah. But he might be doing that now because there's a rumour going around that he's been offered to fight on a BT sport sort of show. So he, that may, might be why he's come out and said it on Box, Boxing Social is it with Tebbit today. Have you seen it? No, I haven't seen it. He's come out and he said that Adam Smith's got a conflict of interest. And I've been screaming about that for years. But it's only, it's only last Imagine week. Stephen Espinosa commenting on a fight. <laughs> exactly. Well, let me look at you like this, Rico, right? You know, in the last couple of weeks, I've had more emails from people who've got board licence. They're not going to mention the name, and they're all saying, do you know what, kid? I thought you were a dickhead at first, a bit of a loud mouth and blah de blah but they're all saying, do you know what? You're very brave for what you've been doing. I've been putting it on them all, haven't I? To get their acts mm -hmm. together. And what are they going to do? What are they going to do? Come and do me in. For what? Just because I've got an opinion. What about their fucking opinion with microphone? Ruining kids' lives. If they're actions are not good they've got to be able to counter if you're not good at your job Rico you've got a big job in PR right mm -hmm. if you're not very good at your job for instance didn't you have something to do with Man City deal with Puma if you fuck yep. up do you think they're going to have you up there dealing with all that no they're not going to say oh Rico can you come up to Manchester and sort this Man Puma deal out with your company and that because it needs going over the line they're going to say Rico jog because you're no good. It's going to be like this. Exactly. Yeah, you got Rico, you're on skid row. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? You're gonna, the, the, that's what's going to happen. So you've got to be accountable for what you do. If I sell, for a few years ago, if you buy a car off me and there's no MOT on it and I sell you it with an MOT because it's a genuine mistake and I get mixed up with paperwork, you have a crash. I'm fucking in court, mate. I've given you a receipt and I've given you a car with a year's test on it. I'm going to fucking jail, mate. Ministry of Transport, te at police, and I'm gone. I'm down road, mate, again. So you have to be <laughs> held accountable. So what's the difference with this with, with this bias? It's out of control. Look at the John Rawlins one at the weekend. Fucking hell. He's <laughs> it's awful. Out there. Not only is he a bad racist, but he's a joker as well, isn't he? I mean, I, I tweeted about that commentating and saying it was shocking in that Denzel Bentley against Heffron fight. And Denzel Bentley actually liked and shared in. You know what? It must be quite disheartening. You're a fighter. You're fighting your first 10-round fight. It's a close fight, however you look at it. I mean, I had a Denzel Bentley winning. But however you look at it, it's a close fight. But if you're watching the commentary and nobody's seeing any of the work you do, it must be quite disheartening, isn't it? Yeah. Hmm. Do you remember the referee that were no good? Do you this, is a, this is a match from years ago. I forgot his name. He was only little. He had a bald head, a pinhead. He was only a small guy. And I remember Roy Keane and all Man United players, Gary Neville, all chasing him. And they all had screwed up faces. They were ranting and raving in his face. And he, Graham Dot, is it all Paul or something? Graham Paul. Oh, it, might, it might not have been him. I forgot his name. He was only a small guy. They yeah. chased after him and they were screaming in his face and that. He was making mistakes all the time. Eventually, they got rid of him, didn't they? Well, there's a system in the FA. There's a system. If you have a bad... So, they have like a promotion and relegation system. So, if you referee well, so they have an independent person that evaluates your refereeing. If, you re if you're refereeing well, you go sort of up the leagues. So, you start at the bottom. And then if you're doing a bad job at the top, you get dropped down. So, they have... So what they try and do is they have the best referees referee the Premier League. And if you have a really bad call, then you get sunburned for a couple of weeks and you have to actually explain to the FA your mistakes. Yeah. But they do have a system where, in theory, you have the best referees, not the guys whose pockets use grease. And also the clubs have no say in who's going to be the referee. Yeah, it's like that Howard Webb. I saw him out in Sheffield one night. Everybody said for years he were in Fergie's pocket, didn't they? Do you remember yeah. him? Web. Every time Man mm -hmm. United had our web, they played. He's a cop, Webb. isn't he? Yeah, he's a cop. Well, I'm coming to that now, right? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I said about him, didn't I? <laughs> and uh, everybody was saying, oh, leave it, leave it, Porky. You've had a drink. And I'm like, you know, you, you fucking shit. You're a shit ref. You've caused more problems. Anyway, 
<laughs> it's like I got done for a motoring offence anyway. They took me, didn't they? Anyway, when I come out for my bail, fucking he what desk sergeant, wasn't he? I would web. So he said, You don't remember me, do you? I went, No, he says, You do. I said, No, I don't. He says, Maggie Mays, you know, this bar in Sheffield. I went, Oh, yeah. yeah. He said, Yeah, he said, You you came over and you give me, I said, Aren't you going to give me bail now? He said, No, you've got your bail and that. He said, But you were the dickhead that night. I said, Oh, well, I'll. <laughs> but he was. And everybody said for years he were in Fergie's pocket, didn't they? He has mm-hmm. to be accountable for giving 94 minutes, 95 minutes to Man United when they're losing or drawing or need a winner. Do you know what I mean? I just think, look, humans are creatures of habit, right? For example, if you're a referee and there's a penalty at 90th minute, right, and it's 2-1 and there's a penalty, if you half of them shit the pants if it's a late penalty, don't they, so they don't give it yeah. up. Well, that's why they brought this bar in now, aren't they? That stops all that. It takes the pressure off the referee. But if you're a judge in a fight, you can ruin somebody's life. For example, Natasha Jonas has just had her life ruined, hasn't she, by Ian John Lewis. He was one of them, wasn't he? But Ian John Lewis made mistakes every single weekend, didn't he, in the fight camp? He, he did. He's Well, it's out there on the internet. He's made more mistakes than anybody. But he'll be refing this weekend again. He'll be caught up in hotels. Be getting his petrol, be getting his food, he'll be getting paid, he'll be earning, and, he, and, he, and he's got a good job as it is. So it's free gratis, isn't it? These people are not daft, but they're ruining lives. When they ruin these match boxing matches at fights, sorry, and by judging or refing, they've got to be punished, they've got to be fucked off for three months or so many weekends. They've got to be punished so they can think about what they've done wrong. But even if they're not doing it, even if they're not doing it intentionally, my problem is that the promoter gets to choose the referees. You know, the promoter has sway in who the referee is, right? Whether it's officially or unofficially. So you know, as the referee or as the judge, you know where your bread is buttered. If I want to be working on another matchroom show, I'm gonna. If it's a close fight, it's gonna to go to the home fighter. Isn't that the real problem? Yeah, that's the problem, Rico. And it's like, for example, the worst ever, 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 ever two fights that I have ever seen in my whole life are Edison Miranda against Arthur Abram. You remember that one, don't you? Yep. And Sven Oscar. He, brought, Sven Oscar. he stopped the fight, didn't he? He waved the fight off <laughs> with a knockout win for Miranda. Uh, Willie, Cali Sowland's dad jumps up, doesn't he? Big Willie Sowland. Yeah. And... Uh, so, no, no, you can't do that. And Randy Newman's having a debate with him, and then they made him fight on, didn't they, Abraham? Then they took five points off Moran. How can you take five points over 12 rounds off somebody? You get disqualified. You get disqualified after the second because he did it to cover his sin. If it went to points and it were close, the five points he took off would be enough for him to get him over the line. And it just, what will fight? You've given five rounds, haven't you? He, he only won one round in the fucking fight. But they took five points off Miranda, didn't they? But, well, you're giving him ten rounds in effect, aren't yeah, you? But, but the, it, the five points didn't matter anyway because the judges in the fight scored every round for him. The guy had a broken <laughs> jaw. That is the most corrupt fight. Well, that's when the investigations started, didn't they, into the Sowlands and that. And exactly. The one? Sven Ocker against Robin Reed. <clears throat> the, the, they, he had Sven Otka, right, had such a run in Germany, it was unbelievable. But the Robin Reed one was a bad one, wasn't it? Have you ever seen that? Go watch Robin Reed. I have seen fan. Robin Reed against Sven Otka is the worst 12 round fight I've ever. He took a point off Robin in a round for knocking Guy down, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> and it made the difference on the night. But that is that ruined Robin Reed's life because he would have had the WBA and the IBF belt. And you're going to get paid, isn't he? After that. It's so wrong. But the, this has been going on for too long. We're going around in circles with it. That were in early 2000s. We're going around in circles with this, mate. In circles. And it, I just think it's getting worse. And I think Britain is now the new Germany. I do for decisions. That's shocking. Some I have an idea. Shocking, mate. Go on. I, so maybe... I know it's not the same angle, but maybe they should score the fight from a studio, or you should have two referees scoring for a studio, one from the ringside, and you wouldn't know who the referees are in the studio, 
and they could be anywhere in the world, right? So you could have a Mexican referee refereeing a fight, and then they just send their scorecards in, and the referees remain anonymous, and two of them score from the studio, one from ringside. That way, you don't know who the referees are, and they aren't attached to a promoter. So if it's a UK fight, you have one referee in the US, one referee in Tijuana, Mexico, scoring it, and then you have one ringside, and that way you have two cards that we don't know who the referee is, sorry, the judge, we don't know who the judge is, judges are, and that way it eliminates the possibility, it gives the, it gives the judges anonymity, you know, they remain anonymous so they can score the fight and they won't have many repercussions. Yeah. I don't know, it just came to me. It might not work as an idea, but it's just one of those things that that way as long as the judges remain anonymous, they can share it, they can score it objectively because they can get gigs elsewhere. Well, you could do that, or you could just put them in booths with headphones on, just watching TVs in different parts of the uh, arena. You don't have to be ringing. Yeah, just put them yeah you could do that. I mean, I think you can score a fight watching. I, I understand the argument for watching it ringside and having to be there, but that's the thing that brings the corruption, isn't it? Yeah, but you've got to look at it like this. When you've got people like Adam Smith, who was the head of Sky Boxing, and they've got an exclusive deal with Matchroom, they've got to be, I'm not saying they do this, they have got to be telling the pundits and commentators before the fight, right, we big our guy up, and we don't big him up. It's happening in front of our eyes. It's got to be like that. But these well, they don't even necessarily have to say anything. Everybody knows the game, right? If I say the right things, I will get another trip. Yeah, I'll get another trip out to Vegas. And do you think these referees aren't staying in the same hotels as the Sky team, promoters, and everybody else? Listen, I went out to Bulgaria with Robin Reed and we sat talking in Bulgaria and Robin said to me, but I'd already heard this story uh, yeah. years ago. Before he fought Otka, they went out for something to eat, right? They were Robin, uh, Brian, Brian, what's he called? Brian Summer, his trainer, the old guy from uh, Moston. Brian Hughes, Robin Reed, and somebody else. They've gone into a restaurant. There's Calla there, Willa Sowerland, Nissa Sowerland, three judges and referee all tucking into Tucker all drinking last supper it's a true story there teddy atlas tells that tale better than me tells it better than me so i said well what, what did you do robin just says, well fucking I, I i won't really bothered to be honest i thought i'm gonna knock him out do you know what i mean do it but what how can that work all that shower of shit sat there would you get that with man united sat with fa and and Howard Webb, not, well, you might have done with Howard Webb, but <laughs> well, you, won't do, you won't get that, would you? They'd be a bit no, more discreet, but it's blatant. And there's too much of that goes on. I could tell you stories like that, but I'm making your eyes pop out, mate, regarding stuff like that. But I just think there's too much of that going on. We're not, it's not a level playing field. In, kids are going on shows now knowing that they need a knockout. Other kid knows that if I don't get knocked out, I've got this in bag and I'm going to fight again. The Conor Ben one against Payano, that were one. Uh, Ricky Burns, Beltram, that were a shocker. The, the, there's been loads, haven't there? Katie Taylor. I mean, there's one every weekend, mate. There's one every weekend. One or two every weekend. It feels like it's happening more here than it happens in the US or Germany or anywhere else. I thought Mark Efron got done at weekend. I thought he got beat. I'm a big Mark Efron fan. I just thought he lost. He'll come again, though, but I thought he got beat, mate. thought he got beat. And that's just how it goes. But people don't want to say it. But a certain fight I got beat. three ten ten rounds. Three sorry. So one. So each judge scored a ten ten round. How is that possible? Why are we scoring? Why are we allowing ten ten rounds in boxing? Somebody needs to win a round, right? You can't have a round even. What about scoring it nine and a half points out of ten instead of nine? Like they used to. Who did that? Old olden days. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, like when Ali fought uh, Ken Norton, the scoring war in the halves as well, when it nine and a half out of ten, or eight and a half out of ten, or nine or eight, they had that half a point, and I think they could do that, make it a bit finer. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, there's, there's less chance of a draw that way. 
less chance of a draw. Yeah, they didn't get many draws in them days. But just... And then you could see swings. Then you could see swings that somebody scored the five, five rounds more than somebody else. Yeah. Anyway, on a positive note, what, what about Fury Joshua? Is it going to happen? No. No, I don't think it will happen either. Is Frank going to work with Eddie? I mean, no, I why, why stop milking the cow, right? You know, they can, they can both fight whoever they want as many times uh, as they want, make decent money, be on pay-per-view. Why, you know, they'll be fighting against each other when they're 36 or something like that. I just don't think that... Uh, I don't think Eddie and Frank are going to work together. I think Eddie might meet him for a meal so he can say he's done it. But I then think... I then think... I think his ego's that big. I then think that he'll go out and he'll come out and say, look, we, we way they wanted to do it. I don't think I were going to enjoy it. That's one of Dennis's lines. It, when Dennis didn't want to work with you, he just says, I just don't think I'm going to enjoy it. He just says that. That's letting you down gently. It means fuck off. I think that's what yeah. I do. I said, I can't work with Frank. Oh, I don't think I'd enjoy it. But we tried, but we couldn't do it. Back to the drawing board and keeping Joshua and Fury away from each other. And also say that they don't want to fight each other anyway, because they're of course they're fighting men, aren't they? They're, they're, fighters fight want to fight against each other. They want to be the best. Do they? I think they do. I genuinely Eubank think fighters. Fight. Chris Eubank didn't want to fight Roy Jones. He told somebody who I know. Yeah, but I mean, right? You, you know, if somebody's got the beating off you, that's one thing. But if you think you have the beating of somebody else, you will want to fight them. Billy Joe didn't want to fight Canelo, did he, when he got off her? His career I is... I don't think so. He knocked it back. Career no, I, I don't think Billy Joe... Joe. Billy Joe wants to remain an un undefeated. Well, let's hope he does. Because he's a talented kid. But I just think that we're having our chains pulled and I think it might be overcooked like Pacquiao and Mayweather. Mayweather. That was overcooked, wasn't it? Calm Brook ended up burning, didn't it? That, that, he, he overcooked too much, but what can he do, right? Everybody wanted it for years. I remember about seven, eight years ago, everybody was clamoring for that fight. Yeah. Yeah. And do you know what? If you could get them both together and say, look, no matter what, who wins, you're going to have a rematch and you're going to create history and be part of something. And even if you lose, so what? But look what you achieved and look what you earned. They could do it that way. And like Frotch and Groves, I think Groves is over it now, getting licked twice. But look what they achieved. And whenever you think of Groves, you think of Frotch, don't you? Yeah, exactly. And actually, when you think about Frotch, even though he achieved so much, you think about that Groves moment because that was the moment that brought British boxing back. Yeah, yeah. I Groves think that's Frotch's best achievement, bringing British boxing back to his peak. Don't forget he brought pay-per-view back after Eddie Earn fucked it up with Audley Harrison. <laughs> and Carl Frotch you... had three pay-per-views. Dylan White's had six after November. Six and not fought for a European. <laughs> you know what? You need to do a book review of Eddie Hearn's book. You need to go through a highlight. -y. Once you've read the book, just go through what's lies, what's lies, what's lies. Because I, uh, I send you already some of the stuff which is lies, right? The yeah. snippet of him saying, you know, a few months after the Harrison Hay, you know, Harrison Hay fight, he went to Sky and he had the stable and he built boxing back. And that was like two years later. Do you know what? Right, it's going to be full of lies, lies. Eddie earn has got a problem with truth, mate. He's got a problem with the truth. That's his problem, mate. He's just, it's just, it's that bad now that they think they think that it's okay to do that, and then just because nobody pulls him up on it. No, it Have you ever seen a football manager? Have you ever seen a football manager? lie constantly like could they do that would the football no, press allow them to do that in boxing if they say it they just say we're twinkling and I say yeah well i will just give them a bit of bullshit one it is what it is we're just uh, it's just a bit of banter we're playing game aren't we trying to wipe it up that's there's too much too much of that going on too much so a national it. newspaper printed that fight camp costs five million pounds to put up look at the structure you know enough about construction and everything else and how much it costs. How you can't tell me that costs five million. And a national newspaper ran a story about that. Gareth A. Davis, your mate, your mate from the Telegraph. Do you know what, right? Gareth A. Davis isn't my fucking mate. He's a gimp. <laughs> He's a gimp from Beanville Island. He just got boat over from Gimpville. 
but uh, he's now a, he's now a bean mason. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Gareth A. Davis, right after he's rinsed his mouth out from TCP from having his tongue up Tyson's arsehole, he uh, he's not my cup of tea, but he's a yes man, isn't he? For certain people, he's an outlet. He's a trusted bean mason for the cult. That's what he is, mate. All of them are. They've all got the nose in the trough. Some of them I thought were all right, but I've seen through a lot of them. Because the, the, they'll say one thing to me and then I'll see them hanging out at the back of Eddie Hearn and I'll think, hang on a minute, what's going on here? I'll be on the phone and see, I've just seen you hanging out at the back of them. Where well, I've got a mortgage. Bump, that's him blocked. <laughs> you know, I actually quite like Jeff Powell, I think, is half decent. Yeah, Jeff Powell's all right. He's uh, Mr. Frotcher's him, big mates with him. Nice guy. I like Jeff. Yeah, he seems like a classy guy. He's uh, He likes Dennis, he told me. Yeah, he always bigs Dennis up. Dennis goes back 25 years with him, Jeff. He's all right. He's, uh, he's one of them guys who likes it to be fair, if you know what I mean, Jeff. He likes mm. He he made a lot of noise about that canvas in Germany with Klitschko and Tyson Fury. He was one of them who was saying this has been going on for too long and blah de blah. So I've got a lot of time for Jeff Powell. He's one of the good guys that Gareth A. Davis, no, he'd sell his grandma. He'd sell his grandma him if it furthered him. If it got him an interview on IFL, he'd, he'd have his grandma selling her ass down, down King's Cross Station in London. But, uh, no, not Michael. We're in this weird, we're in this weird uh, boxing phase where journalists are being interviewed by journalists, you know, like a journalist, like Gareth Davies or Mike Coppinger's getting IFL interviews. Yeah, the, the, well, what it is, you see, right, they're not going to that many shows, so they, they still need that fix. Because if you ever see these people backstage at shows, they're like, it's like they're fighting. They think the star, the bouncing about. I mean, I've seen him on AFL doing kung fu kicks one day. Like, oh, I've seen that. They're getting excited because they've had a drink and that, and they're carrying on. And whether they've been having a something a bit more stronger than a drink, I don't know. But I saw him jumping up and whoo, pretending they were Bruce Lee and doing all these moves. And he wouldn't have done that to me because I would have took him down by his legs. It would have kicked one leg up at me. I would have had that other leg on the floor. I would have swung him around by his wig. I would have, spot, I would, I would have grabbed his hair. I'd have grabbed him in an headlock. And you know that ponytail? I'd have grabbed yeah. him like that. I'd have plucked it out like a fucking chicken. I would have put... You think I'm fucking joking, don't you, Rico, right? You've been like that. Come here, you. And I pulled it out. It looked like a doll's fucking head. Carrying off like that, trying to kick people. I said to Kobe, what are you letting him kick you for like that? I'm not going to say what he said like, but he won't have fucking done that to me, mate, let me tell you. Gary. How's your mate, how's your mate, the Cobra? He's all right. He's all right. He's, uh, I'm hoping he's going to be back on Sky soon. <laughs> he said the wrong things. That's the problem, the cult, isn't it? Well, we let, I don't know. I mean, he might, I don't, he, he, he didn't work the pay-per-view. His first one is missed in six years. So there's something not right. It can only be that, can't it? That Joshua interview with Coogan that he did, where he said that Joshua uh, hasn't shown him anything since he got beat. So, and, and that's only what everybody else is saying, isn't it? He got beat by a fat Mexican and he didn't show us anything in Saudi, did he? Am I right? Was he right? He was. He was right, wasn't he? So if Carl's being punished for that, if he has, it's wrong. But, you know... He didn't do the pay-per-view, so I'm assuming it could only be for that, or unless he won't really well. I don't know, but it's not for me to say, is it? But they had Bellew in there, didn't they? The missing man. The man that doesn't want any publicity. The disappearing man. Do you know what I mean? SAS, SAS Bellew. That's been on more shows since he's uh, retired than he was ever during a pro. Soccer, soccer AM, uh, that SAS thing. Anytime I turn the TV on, it's fucking belly on it. Yeah, Tony Bellew. Yeah, it is what it is, Tony Bellew. I'd like to see George Groves on, actually, because I, I, I think George Groves is a good pundit. I think Jamie Moore's good. I think Ryan Rhodes is really good. But none of these seem to get a chance, do they? Do you know what I mean? No, they just... I, you know who I like? Duke McKenzie. Yeah, he's good. They're not going to have him on because he's not going to tote company line, is he? Yeah. 
No. You know what I mean? He's just opened a gym at the end of my road. So every time I walk past, I go down that road. I see Duke McKenzie in the gym working with kids and other people. Yeah. Just Spencer Oliver's going to tote company line, isn't he? Yeah. Darren Barker is. He's married into the matchroom dynasty. So he's going to have to tote company line. Bean, obviously, he's the constructor, isn't he? He's the conductor. Bean. He, yes. He's, he's nipping it all together. Uh, they got rid of Spencer Fearham for the Revas comment. Then he's saying he'd had drugs or something. They didn't renew his contract, did they? But to be honest with you, I watched Spencer Fearham on MTK. I thought it was brilliant. He was good. I even put a Twitter. I even put a tweet out. But Scott it's never gave him a chance. Man. Spencer Fearham. Oh my god! <laughs> I sat and watched it. And I thought, God, I quite like Spencer Fearham now. You so know what? He should he should always have been the guy that goes for the tactical breakdown of what's actually happening in the fight because that's what Sky is really missing. Somebody telling us what's happening. And to Spencer's credit, he can actually he actually understands what goes on in in a boxing ring and what fighters are trying to do. Well, I thought he did really well, and he might just have found his niche there, something he's good at because he hasn't been good yeah. at anything else, has he? No. He weren't good at Sky, were he really? He was just bouncing about with a Sky badge on at press conferences, but they never really gave him a microphone, did they? No, I should have done. I mean, to be honest, the boxing, the level of commentating and level of analysis is so poor that you just need to give people chances and you'll find out who's good. Yeah, I suppose. But uh, he surprised me there, Spencer Fearing. But moving on then, Johnny Nelson, should he resign from Sky? A long time ago, mate. A long time ago. He doesn't add much. He, he's one of those guys that's there for the jolly. He loves being on IFL. He loves, he loves being there for the jolly. Then he'll do his, you know, bet in the studio next to Anna Woolhouse, flirting all the time. And then that's about it. Is Adam Smith running a cult or is he some godfather, Swengali, man of mystery? What's going on behind the scenes? Because the football... They've got rid of all these people in football, all these pundits and this and that, and they're shaking it up. But the boxing's not getting shaken up, is it? Well, you have to, I think you have to look at it this way, right? Adam Smith is the boss of everybody that works at Sky. He's everybody the boss that's boss, appointed. Isn't he? Yeah, so everybody that's, a, everybody that's a, appointed to work at Sky, work for Adam Smith. If Adam Smith doesn't like you, you don't get a gig as a commentator, right? So part of being in that job is. Adam Smith likes spending time with you because they all go to these hotels, they all travel abroad together, they all spend time together. So it's not about how good you are, it's partly about how much Adam Smith likes you and how much he wants to spend time with you. Well, he went to Frotcher's wedding with Johnny Nelson in Italy. And uh, so you'd have thought that Frotch will be all right at Sky, but that doesn't mean no to these people, they're part of a cult, aren't they? Exactly. You know what I mean? But who's who's losing out, right? They having a jolly. Who's who's gained the chef product? Who's the fans? Who's gained the bad product? It's the fans that end up getting the bad product. Listen, I've put enough pressure on them lot in the last few weeks to last a lifetime, and I'm hoping it's shook them up because Johnny's come out and apologised, hasn't he? Matt, have you had many calls? Have many people call you up? Oh no, I get my calls are usually have women numbers in the middle of the night saying what they're going to do to me. <laughs> <laughs> but I, it doesn't really bother me like, unless they knock on my door then they'll get surprised of their life but no, yeah, remember the matchroom call I had that I had that one off Eddie Earns landline didn't I a few years ago do you remember that one <laughs> yeah I remember that I didn't know I had a fucking camera here though didn't I stuck camera right on it <laughs> <laughs> on number and everything then I emailed Eddie and his dad and I've got them emails to this day. I showed you them, didn't I? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. They're funny, aren't they? It wasn't us. It wasn't us. I swear, somebody's using our number. Frank, Frank, Warren. Said it was Frank Warren. <laughs> Frank Warren. Barry Ernst says it was Frank Warren. It's probably Frank that's done that. He's uh, he's been using our numbers. Oh, and it's your fucking number. I've got it on film here. I film. I put on the phone. They can go onto my backlog of videos. They can find it. I think it's Porky gets called for matching or something. And their number came up on the phone. It's like, as I'm holding this phone here now, it lit up like that, and I just put it to it. You remember it, don't you, clearly, don't you? I had an mm -hmm. iPhone. Uh, Dennis's wife bought me an iPhone 5. It was like, that's how long it were ago. And I put the camera to the phone, 
And I'm like, there you go. Fucking match room. And it said, Brentwood. You remember? Essex. Yeah. I went, it's fucking match. I rung it back next morning, didn't I? They went, hello, man. <laughs> I was like, what? Look, if they wanted to have a bit of fun, fair enough, it were an Asian Sheffield voice, wasn't it? I'm not bothered. It was. It might have been Kelbrook, Kid Galliard, or one of their mates. It didn't bother me because they're talkers and they're smoky bacon walkers, isn't they? Talk's cheap, isn't it? But it is. But they didn't they, phoning me on that. They didn't have the brains to ring 141. Or oh, they did the second time after the initial threat. But look, at the end of the day, right, it didn't bother me at first. But it was the cheek of it. And they and they went into full PR mode, didn't they? And covered it up. But to be honest with you, the fact that I was living in their head and I'd only just started then. Because they weren't sure. Because when I started, I just went, boom. I went straight for them, didn't I? Right. And I set my stall out then. I went, right. I'm going to go for these fuckers here. I don't like them now. They're fucking ruining the sport I love. And nobody could grasp it. And I think that's why they set them up. They, had that, they did that what they did. So I know people that have been sat in their company and when fighters are talking and they'll say, how are you doing? All right, have you seen that on social media? Oh, yeah, what's that? Oh, that fucking what Porky said. Look, so what? So what? If it's not true, come on, channel and tell me. Because they never fucking do, do they? You know what I mean? Never, ever do. It obviously yeah. must have got Eddie's nose. I think he sent me a letter, uh, an email saying... He sent me an email saying, I can explain it. It said, you're not my fa- I know you're not my favourite person or something. Or I'm, you're not something like that, but that ain't, that ain't me. I don't know what you're on about. And I said, well, it fucking was you. This is your number. I think Eddie replied, well, fucking not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not fucking bothered, mate. Do what you want or something. And then he's up. And then old man sent me one. I think they sent me four each over the space of an hour. So I'm, I know. I, I was laughing because you're sending them. Over an hour. Quick responses. Yeah, they're quick responses. Four each, four each off them <laughs> over an hour, and I sent them four each. They never fucking get back to you that quick because they fucking knew they were in the wrong. So I said, listen, you fucking admit this, or I'm going to put this video out. I sent him video that I made. I sent him it. I'm going to put this fucker out, Eddie. Do you admit this, cunt? And we'll leave it. And they went, do what you, he went, do what you want. His old man went, eh, be frank, it be frank. It happens to me <laughs> so. Then Eddie sent me a fucking link, didn't he, from this app that shows you how to do it or something. Oh, it'll be from that, it'll be from that. Oh, you fucking <laughs> number come up. I went to Carphone Warehouse. I went, this has happened, blah, blah, blah. This is what happened. Then he went, oh, it's impossible. It's an Apple. Because it were an Apple phone. They wouldn't be yeah. on an Apple, they said. So... I'm not bothered like it. Look, it's all banter, in it? Look, it's all good fucking stuff, in it? There was a time when I liked him, wasn't there? You know what I mean? I mm-hmm. sent this old man. I sent him a Damascus handmade knife, didn't I, one year, Jim, when it was? Yeah. Fucking 400 quid knife made in Dagenham, where he's from. He were proper torch, fishing knife. But look, they're all right, aren't they? He sent me a tenner one year. Do you remember with that letter? <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, that was about seven years ago, that. So look. Well, you said, you said like, fans to fish. Hey, <laughs> Frank the fish. Oh, the rumor is going round that I sent Frank a fish. Pit, well, <laughs> <laughs> you know, Rico, what are you doing to me? <laughs> As if I'd sent Frank a fish. <laughs> but no, look, old man's not bad. I don't mind him because right? he's done it on his own, hasn't he? I've got a lot of time for it, Dad. Yeah. I think he should come out and explain this Epstein uh, carry on. Yeah, should, I mean, somebody should ask him the question, right? <laughs> That were my dad, or my uncle, or my cousin, or or Dennis, or anybody, or you, I'd be like, fucking hell, mate! Can you at least fucking talk about it? What are you doing in his book? Were you, yeah, were exactly. You with him? Did, did, does he owe you money, or did you meet him at a fucking party, or what? What the fuck? Is it? It's, it's, it's silence is deafening, isn't it? Exactly. I, I think something's got to come at it sooner or later. There's questions have got to be asked from all of them in that book. We're talking about a load of kids here being trafficked and that. Mm-hmm. Then, then it's, uh... carry on like it's fuck all Tony Bell you can put all he wants about Twitter and yeah people hanging around schools in vans the nonsense they want torture and well what about this we're not saying nobody's saying Barry Earns guilty we're saying look can you tell us why you're in Epstein's book it's a simple question if it were Piers Morgan he'd be fucking hounded that's true but Matchroom have got that much power they can shut the media up if Coogan were to ask him that question he'd never get access again 
True. If I had access, I'd ask, because I'm that way inclined, aren't I, me, Abs, here? I know you've been getting me access, Baz, and I've been doing well with views, but fucking hell, what were you doing in Epstein's book, me old Tutti Fruity? What were going on <laughs> there? He'd have me removed from it, winning from event. That's what they do, and I just think that they say they're transparent. Well, come and open up about that. Come and tell us about Stubble. Come and tell us about what you took out that zone. Come and tell us how you were putting fighters on seven million a fight when they were only on a million a fight before. Well, what, what have you got a problem with fighters, Porky? Earning six million more than what they should? No, I aren't. I think that's great because the fighters, but you're still getting your fucking twenty percent off six million more than what they should, aren't you? And you and they were just blowing through that guy's money, weren't they? The zone guy. Yeah. Now what? What's happened? What did I say on my channel, Rico, in May 2018? I said, give it two, two years. years. What's happened? Well, it's a race to the bottom. And the problem with the zone was that boxing guys weren't running the zone. If you have that guy, Joe Makovsky, running the boxing division. Oh, he looks like a schoolboy, my friend. Yeah. Look about 12 with spots. He, he, gets, uh, he gets, you know what? He's getting shafted by these boys' promoters. Yeah. Anyways, I'm going to go and get some fish and chips. We've probably done one hour, 45 minutes in. Brilliant. Right. All right, then. Well, listen, we've covered a variety of topics. We've had some banter, and it's been nice to speak to you. Uh, all the best, mate. Keep in touch, and we'll uh, speak again. Thank you very much for coming on, Rico. Don't Thank you to all the hardcore boxing fans and do subscribe to Porky's Corner. Like, share and tweet. And share. You know. Yeah. You know. You know. You know. All right, mate. Speak to you soon. Take care. Bye. -bye. Bye.